Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art. Uh, thank you for asking about this piece of artwork. I spoke with Thomas Ackerman and he is going to get this camera ready and this along with a, another logo that he has. He's going to work with Eric Jordan to put it up on the Post Ignorance website and make it available through the t-shirt through our clothing shop. So this, you will be able to get this. I'm hoping within the next two weeks. I don't know how long the process will take. But we should be able to have t-shirts for sale with this logo. Um, I'm not sure of the colors or any of that stuff. I'm not working on any of those details. But there will be something up there. I believe it's just going to be white and black or probably something like that. They're having to work the details out, I'm sure. So anyways, I am going to continue reading from the book. Uh Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution by Arthur Tamplin and John Goffman. We are in the fifth chapter, Lip Service to Public Health. And um, I'm going to put this down and just get right to reading. And I will spare you guys any of my opinions about stuff that's gone on. I put a little video up earlier because I felt pretty hot-headed about something today. So... We're on page 79, setting a price on human life. This is the first time we have seen a sanguine evaluation of the worth of human life. The dollar value of the misery and suffering of a case of cancer or leukemia fixed at $250,000. Maybe our estimates are wrong. Maybe it would come out 100000 or 500000 To whom is it worth $250,000? To have one person suffer this fate unnecessarily. To the victim? To the family he leaves behind? Have either the prospective victims or their families been consulted as to how they feel about donating a life so one of one of them so society can have $250,000? Is this human? Is this our concept of human morality? But... This calculation emanates from an atomic technologist in a serious discussion. Hmm. We might point out to Dr. Cohen that since we only considered cancer and leukemia here, he is getting the possibly six times greater number of genetic deaths in addition to the cancer death for $250,000. This, quote, bonus, unbonus, makes human life, or loss of it, even cheaper. Other experiences we have had with atomic technologists are even more illuminating. Professor Teller, the devil Teller, Teller is the devil. Professor Teller, that's my opinion, he didn't write that. <laughs> Professor Teller is a leading figure in the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory. Not, long, not too long after the establishment of the biomedical program at Livermore, Dr. Teller called several of us into his office. The subject of the discussion was that he thought a primary objective of the biomedical program should be at Livermore. He thought we had quite well in mind what our, he, we thought we had quite well in mind what our objectives were and what work was required. But certainly we were most eager to receive suggestions from everyone as to how to, to do our tasks more effectively, especially from someone with the nuclear technology experience of Professor Teller. President Kennedy, said Te Dr. Kel I'm sorry, President Kennedy, Dr. Teller related to us, has stated that in his 1961 inaugural address that nuclear war could result in the abolition of human life on Earth. We thought this was a very important statement that President Kennedy had made and that it should be made over and over again. And the more prominent people who make this statement heard worldwide, the better. But Professor Teller was most disturbed by President Kennedy's inaugural address. He, Dr. Teller, had given very serious thought to the problem of how many people might survive a worldwide nuclear war. And he was certain that some human beings would survive. The biomedical program, reasoned Dr. Teller, should set as high a priority the development of 
evidence that some human beings would definitely survive a nuclear war. Listen to that statement again, you guys. <clears throat> the biomedical program, reason Dr. Teller, should set as a high priority the development of evidence that some human beings would definitely survive a nuclear war. And if he said we accomplish such a worthwhile endeavor, then perhaps on a second inaugural address, President Kennedy would not again repeat the serious error of saying no human beings could survive a nuclear war. We left the conference numbed, speechless. What if two people, 200 people, 200,000 people, or 2 million people survived a nuclear war? Should President Kennedy really have altered his statement? Needless to say, the biomedical program at Livermore did not incorporate these supremely important studies in its work. But we had learned a great deal more about the thinking processes and considerations important to some of the nuclear, quote, technologists, unquote. Subtitle, Dr. Teller is unworried over nuclear weapons tests. Professor Teller's view that radiation is not a serious hazard at low or moderate doses is well known to the world. He was expounding this view in his effort to convince the world that nuclear weapons tests in the atmosphere were not creating untold misery and death from nuclear fallout radiation. The reader may recall the famous debates on this subject between Dr. Linus Pauling and Dr. Teller during the 1950s. The Nobel Committee awarded Linus Pauling a second Nobel Prize, this time for peace as a result of his work on this subject. Dr. Teller was very unhappy that we abolish weapon tests in the atmosphere. He is certainly still unconvinced that radiation is very worrisome. When Professor Teller states an opinion, we should scrutinize it carefully, as for instance, the following quote from a letter to Senator Mike Gravel. Wow. The president the, in, the present guidelines for permissible doses should not be lowered for the following reasons. 1. On the basis of common sense, the present guidelines are safe. The main reason for this statement is that the guideline co coincides with the average exposure due to causes other than atomic energy developments. This exposure has existed for a long period and furnishes a strong link with experience. It is generally recognized that the danger to an individual is small if 0.17 rem per year is added to the existing average of 0.17 rem per year. The fact that the chance of damage is so small makes it difficult to find and prove damage at these low levels of radiation. These statements of Dr. Teller must be regarded as a, uh, as a classic of our times. Let us explore his statement that the danger of the individual is small if he receives 0.17 rem per year additional radiation. If everyone in the U.S. received this dose, there would be there would in time be 32,000 extra cancer and leukemia deaths per year. For our country, this represents an unparalleled public health disaster. Of course, since there are 200 million people in the country, and wow, have we really exploded since then, since there are 200 million people in the country, this means one out of every 6,000 people per year as an additional potential radiation cancer victim. If one chooses to look at a major public health disaster as a small danger to the individual, simply because only one extra person in 6,000 dies per year, then Dr. Teller is technically correct. But this simply doesn't mean he doesn't appreciate, this simply means he doesn't appreciate that major diseases kill one in a thousand or one in ten thousand per year. 
and the medical research and treatment efforts that, that go into it to prevent occurrences of this frequency. I'm going to read that again. But this simply doesn't mean, he, this simply means he doesn't appreciate the major disease, diseases. I don't understand that. But this simply means he doesn't appreciate that major diseases kill one in a thousand or one in ten thousand per year and medical research and treatment go to great efforts to prevent occurrences of this frequency. Oh, I get it. Okay. I'm sorry about that, you guys. Radiation is harmful whether natural or man-made. Dr. Teller's statement that damage is small, quote unquote, as existing levels of 0.17 rem per year is totally without foundation. Our evidence indicates that natural background radiation plus medical exposure, which account for the existing 0.17 rem per year, do considerable harm both in the production of cancer and leukemia and in the production of genetic disorders. Just because we can't do anything to stop the natural radiation doesn't mean it does no harm. There is absolutely nothing, nothing at all, from anywhere that indicates natural radiation to be less harmful than man-made radiation. A gamma ray is a gamma ray, no matter where it comes from. Professor Teller knows this very well. Why he or anyone would separate natural radiation from other radiation is beyond us. And how he assumes through common sense that man polluting himself with an additional amount of radiation and radiation equal to what he already gets is safe defies comprehension for us and probably for most of the world's biological community. These biologists worried seriously and properly along with Linus Pauling about, the, about adding fallout radiation, which was only about 1 20th of natural radiation. Dr. Teller apparently doesn't worry as much as the biologists do. Subtitle. Common sense doesn't always make sense. With respect to common sense, which Professor Teller uh, Teller says assures him not to worry about 0.17 rem or 170 millirads per year. There is a number of terribly important examples in scientific history that he might think about. And if he did think about them, he might lose a little faith in the quote common sense unquote prevalent at various periods in the history both of physics and medicine. When the evidence was provided by Galileo that the earth revolved around the sun, common sense told the experts of his day that this must be heresy. Both the earth does, but, but the earth does revolve around the sun. When someone suggested the earth was round, not flat, common sense of the time must have suggested the idea was really ludicrous. The earth is not perfectly round, as Dr. Teller knows, but much closer to it than flat. When Simon Weiss suggested that doctors and midwives were the cause of child, childbed fever, and Vienna medical authorities knew from common sense that Simon Weiss must be wrong, Yet women do not die of this dread disease today because we finally learned that Simon Weiss was right. Huh. Childbed free fever. I don't even think I know what that means. Come on, Tarzan. Get down. Silly. <sighs> when Hammond and Horn proposed in 1954 that heavy cigarette smoke produces an enormous increase in cancer of the lung, Common sense told the medical industry and just about everyone else this must be silly, since obviously so many people smoked and didn't have lung cancer. Essentially, no reputable medical authority disputes Hammond and Horn 16 short, Hammond and Horn 16 short years later. Would Professor Teller consider rethinking his reliance on common sense with respect to radiation? to radiation hazard now that Dr. Stewart had shown that radiation levels just twice annual natural radiation
doubles the incidence of childhood cancer and leukemia if the infant receives the radiation in the first 13 weeks in its utero life. We must attend to Professor Teller's further assurances in his letter to Senator Gravel. Professor Teller says, Procedures exist in many cases in which radioactive body burden can be removed if this body burden should exceed the maximum permissible dose. Thus, occasional exposure of people to excessive radiation can be counteracted and the relatively small hazard to a limited number of people need not be incurred. All of this can and should proceed under the present guidelines. It is only after a sober consideration of the deep implications of Professor Teller's statement that the reader's fury will mount. Aside from a few rare types of radioactivity poisoning, there is practically nothing known about how to get radioactivity out of people. Moreover, some of the chemicals used to attempt to remove radioactivity from human beings are exceedingly dangerous and may even be more dangerous than the radioactivity. But Professor Teller seems utterly obvious to any of these medical facts. He is willing to let people be exposed to the maximum dose and to hope some method is available to clean them up once they are poisoned. So he suggests leaving the allowed amount of radioactive poison as high as it is while hoping that some way might be found to salvage the life of those injured. We wonder how many individuals in the public at large appreciate being the victims of this promotional philosophy. It may well turn out, Professor Teller, that the public may prefer not to be poisoned at all. But then, if the allowable dose of radiation is lowered, and thus prevents poisoning by radioactivity, Professor Teller would undoubtedly fear for the viability of his favorite program, the Plowshare, quote, peaceful, unquote, nuclear explosives program. In discussing the benefits to be lost if people are better protected against radiation hazards, Professor Teller tells Senator Gravel in the same letter the following. A second benefit which might suffer unnecessarily by strict regulations is the Plowshare Project. Due to exceedingly great caution, the development of the project has been slow. We have to rely on plans and guesses concerning possible benefits. What Professor Teller is telling us is that we must explode enough of its... Come on, Tarzan. Goodness. Okay, I guess I'm going to stop. My cat won't stop. He really wants some attention. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to take up at the top of the page, on page 85. I stopped reading here. So I'll come back to the page of 85 uh, tomorrow night or the next time when I get back to this. Um, it's 18 minutes long. I apologize. It's a bit long, but I found this super fascinating, and I did not want to stop reading. So... Um, I guess my cat made that happen. <laughs> Ciao, you guys. Sweet dreams. And, uh, you know, we're going to succeed because it's really so bad. There's only one way to go, and that's improve. Uh, I mean, I, I, that's what I think about that. Uh, what was it? $31 trillion trillion percent increase or something like that of the radiation. Like, they might as well have just picked a number out of the hat. They have no idea how much radiation is coming out of there. I don't think they even know what they're doing at all in Fukushima. I don't trust them. I don't believe a word from them. Uh, but we do know it's dangerous and gravely dangerous. So, so I'm going to keep reading this book so we can understand the mentality of these lunatics running this program. Ciao, you guys.